Do your students share their learning in creative ways? Let's take a look at a few creativity tips when working in digital environments. Hello there. If we haven't met before, my name is Monica Burns. I'm an ed tech and curriculum consultant, the host of the Easy Ed Tech podcast, and the voice behind the blog, classtechtips.com. I'm excited to join you today to unpack this ed tech concept. Let's go ahead and dive in. There are many different types of creative products for students to make to share their learning. You might have students create something that's more text-based where they are writing and pulling in links and pictures that can support their thinking or complement their writing. You might have students create more audio-based pieces like a podcast where they interview an expert or they talk with a classmate about a topic. Or you might find that you're having students produce more creative video content, perhaps making a slideshow where they're narrating as the images pop across the screen, or they're going out and filming an interview or capturing different steps for how they solved a problem or tackled a science experiment. Let's look at a couple different ways that you might support student creators and a couple spotlight tools that might come in handy. Let's first think about some of the types of creations students can make, breaking down those pieces that we've looked at already. Audio creations might include a narration, a conversation, or a student giving an explanation of something. There are a few different tools that allow students to record audio, but when working with students for an audio creation, you definitely want to have them listen to exemplars, like a great podcast example, create a script or an outline to follow along, and practice before they hit the record button. For text creations, you might have students create blog posts, write news articles, or have an interview that they are ready to publish. This might even include micro blogging products, which is just another way for thinking about long Instagram captions or long captions that go along with social media style posts. For this, as well as the audio pieces, you'll want to find some great examples. You might lean into features within a tool like voice to text and have lots of iterations or different drafts that students create and share for feedback. When you're looking at more multimedia or video-based creations, this might include a combination of different pieces. So a multimedia creation could have a video component, an audio recording, some text, and there's lots of different ones to consider. There's no one right way to go about this, but a lot of different tools and features that may come in handy. First up, let's think about a project plan. Having students set up a plan, whether it is an outline for their writing, whether it is a shot by shot guide or a storyboard for a video creation is so important. And you can do this in a space where kids can get feedback from you or feedback from a classmate or have a collaborative planning experience. One spot you might want to explore is Google Docs. Let's go take a look at how you might set this up with students so that it becomes a collaborative space and one where feedback is easily given and received. So I'm right here in what might feel like a familiar space, uh, Google Docs. Now using this as an example, but there are many different document platforms that you could try out. For a project plan, you wanna have some level of flexibility while also providing some structure for students. And one of my favorite ways to give both of those things, the flexibility and the structure, is by using tables within Google Docs. So I'm gonna go to insert here, and there's a lot of different things that I could um, insert here, but tables are a great way for storyboarding, outlining, or planning, especially if kids are working collaboratively 
in these spaces. So you might make a table like this one and students might put in a description of what they want to accomplish on slide number one, or they might put in their script or what they're gonna say, or they might even add in the keyword they're going to use or what type of picture they wanna find. So you might have this set up simply as slide number. Imagine students are doing a video here. This could be page number if they're making an ebook. We'll make this one a little smaller here. You might have a script or what I will say so students can prepare that before the recording. And they might even have a space for visuals. And this could include search terms or keywords. And so this would be a way for students to create a plan. What's nice about this is that if they are in this space collaboratively, they can add a comment on each other's uh, pages or you can leave a comment for them if you are taking a peek at their outline or their project plan. Now there are two spotlight tools we'll take a closer look at that are perfect for supporting students as creators. I've done some work with their teams and have had behind the scenes looks. And I love the first one, Book Creator, which is an ebook creation tool that lets kids of all ages capture and share their learning with multimedia options. And I love Spark Video, which is a movie making tool. Kids can add their voice to a slide show full of icons, images, video, text content, you name it. Let's dive into both of these favorites so that you can see some of the things you may consider as you are working with student creators this year. So first up, I'm here on Book Creators website. I'm logged in and ready to create a new book. They provide options for comic books, for plain books, as well as lots of templates to explore. Tons of options here. Now, if you're starting off with students with a blank book, I'm gonna choose Landscape for today, your student creators have a few different options of things to add to their page. They can tap on the plus sign here. They can import different things, whether it is an image they're searching for, a map, and they wanna add in a place in the world, a file from their computer or from their drive, or they can embed from another favorite tool, even a Spark video if they wanted to. Now there is also the option to snap a picture or record a video that they add right on their page, draw with the pen tool, even adding in emojis or using some of the auto draw technology they have access to. And you can add in text, including voice to text, as well as recording your voice right here on the page. There are shapes and lots of extra things here that give kids a lot of flexibility for creating an e book right from within book creator. The other spotlight tool to take a peek at is Spark Video. Now this is one of three Spark tools. I'm accessing it on my Chrome web browser, just like Book Creator, but you could also access Spark Video by downloading their iOS app for iPad or for iPhone. Now here students can add a few different things. They can put text on any of their slides. They can switch up the layout as they like as well. They can put in a photo, either one they take right then on the fly, one they've saved to their device, or one they wanna search for by doing a keyword search. They can also add icons that come straight from the Noun Projects library, as well as video, but the video has to be video that's actually saved to their device already. Now they can switch up the theme. I've got some of my branded themes built in here, but there's lots of extras to choose from and plenty of colors that you can explore with them. And they can even add music to go into the background. So we're a book creator, the pages, you're building out multiple pages. Here you would build out multiple slides down here at the bottom, showing off the steps on how to solve a science experiment or a retell of a favorite story or a story that students are writing on their own an imagined story or personal narrative. So lots of things you can do right here within this space to give students the power to create. There is some collaboration opportunities for student creators inside of Spark, and that's a feature in Book Creator in their paid version as well. So lots of things that you can do to set up students for success as a creator in these digital spaces. 
When students make a product of their learning that is ready to share with the world, they can capture their thinking, share what they've learned in a very creative way. Empowering students as creators is more than just showing them a great tool, but setting them up for success along this journey. I can't wait to see what you and your students make and create this school year.